Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the sphere primitive in OpenSCAD for our beginner series. You can he see here I have a whole bunch of uh, uh, spheres depicted and we're going to just go through each one and kind of describe what the differences are and how they work. Before I get started I want to show you one thing. First I need to comment this out for the for the tutorial and then I'll show you that I'm using a tool called uh, in my library so I have a personal library called tools.scad and one of the modules in there is called stack 5 or stack I'm sorry and it's uh, basically separates out any of the children items which are the in this case these spheres it separates them out in, in five uh, five unit increments uh, you can ignore that for this tutorial but and the only difference you'll see is as you implement each sphere, they'll all be drawn at 0, 0, 0, the origin. So what I would do is implement, you know, the first sphere, then modify that command to match the second one. So in this first case, you see the sphere is implemented. Uh, it's the default sphere with no with no arguments, and that creates a, a sphere of uh, with uh, the fragment size, and that's this is one fragment. It's also ref can be referred to at times as a face or a facet, um, but I think the official term is fragment, I'm not sure. But anyway, you see the unit size of that fragment is one. And so that basically what OpenSCAD does is it makes it a determination about you know the minimum number of fragments needed to, to make a sphere shape and then divides them around the, the main circumference. Uh, so it does a calculation internally to get that. We can control that to some extent, however, though, and if we wanted to make these three spheres look normal, we, there's a setting in, in FreeCAD that we can change. It's variable, and it's a global variable in this case. And we're going to just change that to 25. So now it's a fragment number of 25, and so, sometimes it says facet, and sometimes it says um, face. Well, I don't think it ever says faces, but sometimes I'll say faces. So when I compile that or preview that with F5, you'll see now it's drawn and you'll see that now that it's divided the main circumference up into 25 fr fragments. And then each uh, slice of the sphere, so then it calculates the slices to have uh, the, the right number of fragments for each slice, which is, you know, it's gonna be the same as that main circumference. So here you see the three spheres expressed in, in three different ways. One with a radius of one and one with a diameter of two. And that's what the R and the D are, are equivalent of there. Uh, if we just change the sphere to a 3, that's going to be a radius of 3, and you'll see that it changes dynamically like that. If we want to be specific with ra radius, well, this will have the same effect, a radius of 3, and a diameter of 6 would give us the same effect using the D. So that's probably just a pre you know whatever preference you have. If you want to have an explicit radius or explicit diameter, they all produce basically the same thing. So with that basic understanding, let's move on to using the, the fr uh, fragment numbering or fragment numbers to show you some other shapes you can create with, with the sphere command. So if we see here, we have, um, we have four shapes. One is with a face number of three creates a triangular prism. Now, as far as I know, you can only create an equal equilateral triangle prism. So you couldn't do any kind of isosceles uh, that I know of. You might be able to use scale perhaps to do something. I don't know. I'll have to explore that in a later video. So now you, here you can see is a, uh, a cuboid prism or I don't know if it's called a square prism or not. And then some other shapes that are spherical but um, you know but maybe you can create some uh, multi-sided dice. I don't know. So that's seven. So let's say if we add a five you'll see the basic shape. Let's see what a six looks like. Oops sorry. That's my little text function there. So let's add a sphere of six, just to see what it looks like. And we'll do a, an eight one two. But what you'll notice is the, the face, whereas the face numberings change, the, the top, uh, the polar regions, just simply represent the number of sides in that geometric shape. So you have a seven sided one, two, three, you know, seven sided shape, a regular polygon here, and a six sided regular polygon here. So those will always be a, a flat a geometric primitive there, or 2D primitive polygon. So, you know, those are the different spheres with the face numbering. If we move on to um, face numbering radius, you see those represented. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you 
is the reason why you want to declare you know you can see that if you declare it specifically here even if you have the global setting to create these you know the explicit setting within the command is going to override that so you can have multiple shapes even though your global setting is different and let's take a look at this uh, prism here and you'll see if I wanted to resize that basically the radius is going to set uh, set the height and and the size of this triangle triangle but by leaving the FN equals 3 it's going to stay in that triangular shape there so if I just put a 10 there that'll set the radius to 10 and create you know a giant triangle like that okay or whatever or whatever whatever you need it to be and the same is going to be true of, of the, uh, cube, the, of the cuboid of, you know, of all of these so you can resize these with the radius um, but restrict the face number you know create the geometric shape with the face numbering for example let's ch let's change the radius on this to make a larger cube too so the last three are basically um, you know the same kind of sphere but with specific specific face numberings or facet numbers or whatever fragment numbers um, you know whatever floats your boat there specified and you can see how they have a increasing degree of, of resolution there and that's and that's so you know you can if you want to your model to run faster you want a lower resolution if you want it to look pretty but take a long time to compile you increase the face number so this will you know a sphere of this of this size will increase the uh, will increase the render time and I think they want they limit it to 200 and they recommend 100 being the most you ever use so you can see how uh, how much more refined that looks there is one other feature or one other variable that I want to tell you about, introduce you to, but not instruct you on. It's called uh, fragment size. So the fragment size, and you can set that to uh, a value that is constrained by the size of your sphere. But the one thing I wanted to tell you is fragment size only works if you don't have fragment numbering. So fragment size will change the size of, of, of these, uh, will specify the minimum size but it will be ignored if you have face numbering. So in another video, we'll go into fragment size and fragment angle um, to, to further customize your sphere. But that's it for the sphere. It's a very simple shape, um, easy to use. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to add before I leave is that the origin is always at the center of the sphere. There's really no center equals true for the sphere because it's just, it's sort of re would be redundant. Um, and there's no other place to put the origin no other logical place so if you like these make sure you subscribe hit the alarm bell for more and in future beginner videos we'll be covering some of the modifiers or um, or operators they're called at times too. Uh, translate and rotate and maybe scale or resize and and some and more like that and we'll be talking about what a child object is and what how to use children so uh, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video